let's talk about your fabulous book, which is now an audio book, which is called Pride, Colonel's Conquest, book two. And I, I would like to start with, if it's okay with you, something you wrote in the author's notes. And you wrote, I write for my dad. So dad, here I am. We miss you very much. I feel your disapproval. Damn, it feels effing great. What's that about? He actually died two years ago. Uh, the anniversary was just a couple days ago. Well, obviously, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Um, he knew I wanted to be a writer. Um, I know that I probably would not have had his support with what I wrote. And the fact that I never really met his uh, approval in many, many ways, um, even though I, so to speak, made it as a writer, um, I don't think he would have been proud of me. So um, I sort of like shoved that in his face that, yeah, I did it, but <laughs> so what? I mean, he, he wouldn't have cared anyway, but I did it for me. I did it for me. I had a very uh, interesting relationship with my father as well, but it wasn't, I mean, he never told me he was proud of me. And, uh, but I, we never really had it out or anything. It was very passive. I was, I was a wimp and just, you know, he was a very dominant character in, uh, in the household. But did you have a, a, was there a lot of friction there then growing up? I am a very stubborn woman. <laughs> My father was hard headed as well. We were very similar. Yeah. Um, I think it's the Irish in us. <laughs> okay. So I think that, um, yeah, there was definitely friction. Definitely. So what did, what did he do for a living? He was a truck driver. Okay. And was he creative at all? Did you, did you feel? Yes, very much so. In fact, I always said to him, dad, you should be a writer. He loved to read. He was very creative. He loved music. He could sing. Oh, he had the most beautiful voice. But uh, he never really explored that. Do you think that was maybe the source of his problem with you, that you were going to explore a, a creative side of your, your personality and he may have felt regret or even jealousy that you were going to go that way? I don't know. I think he felt it wouldn't have been lucrative for me. He wanted me to be uh, financially well off. Uh, I think he struggled so much of his youth. He lived in poverty in the mountains of West Virginia. Uh -huh. And uh, so he understood deprivation. He didn't want me to have that. Right. So you think maybe, so would he, you say he, disapproval, do you think it would have been disapproval of you wanting just to be a writer or disapproval of the content of what you ended up writing? Oh, both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the eldest. Uh-huh. Uh, Out of how I'm many? Woman. So, I mean, he had very, uh, I would say, backwards views on women. Uh, we were supposed to be modest and not think about sex whatsoever. I was married in the past. I'm still very close with my ex-mother-in-law. I mentioned her previously. Um, but yeah, we were not supposed to think about sex or want it even. So um, yeah, what I wrote about and what I do write about, it, no, never. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you, you say this was West Virginia. Did you grow up in West Virginia? No, I grew up here north of Baltimore. Right, I see. So, oh, he 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 moved there, did he? Yes, yes, he moved here. Uh, his mother actually moved here uh, to get a job because uh -huh. West Virginia is very, very poor rural area. Right. And uh, there was work, that, uh, factories, um, things that you know, after the war, uh, his mom could afford to do and she needed a job so she moved here and then of course he was the oldest too so he lived here as well and what about your mom she uh was um a house cleaner she cleaned houses uh she did very well actually probably better than my dad financially <laughs> <laughs> and um she was very supportive of me she still is i will not let her read my books 
at all. <laughs> they're, they're not the kind of, well, the, the, the one I read is not the kind of book I would hand to my mother. No. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> right. But your mom's cool with it all that you, you, you're making it as a writer. Absolutely. And do you have a day job? No, just a writer. You are a professional. So you've done it. You've actually, you're living the dream. You are yeah. a professional author. And, and are the other books dark and dystopian like this one? Yes, all of them. Right. Every single one. <laughs> yeah. So what drew you to that kind of genre? I think it's a form of therapy for me. Um, yeah. I think a lot of times uh, what we write is sort of based on um, what our mindset is at the time. Yeah. And whether it's good or bad, we sort of like go from that. So Right. And was this the kind of book that you were reading? When read you read books. for pleasure, <laughs> inspired, what was that? Was that what you were reading? Um, I like bully books as they call them. They could, oh, they have, the, the genre has a name. Yes. It's, yes. Well, I'm being educated. I'm being let in. In fact, I'm already in that world because I narrated the book. They're called. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Bully I see. books. Yes. Or right. enemies to lovers or, um, uh, anything dark, dark. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's dark. All right. It comes with a, a, a publisher's warning. The publisher's note on it says this dark dystopian romance is not a wine and flowers romance. The men are warriors and the women are owned. Take a ride. If you dare, you'll be glad you did. <laughs> now, I'm sure they've they've put that as a genuine warning, but that must help sell books <laughs> I <laughs> to, <hope so. laughs> to, to people who are in that. OK, so you, you were a fan of that kind of style of bully books. Yes. Wow. So where do you start when you're writing a book? Now, this is book two and, and I haven't read book one. So where do you start when you're putting something like this together? Is it with the story or the characters? I, it's a, usually it's a name, just a name. A name. I have a, a baby name book and I go, I flip through it and I'm like, this sounds like a fantastic name. What kind of character would this be? And I go from there and then I create a title yeah. The title makes me think of scenarios and then I sort of either dream something that night or um, something pops into my mind. It goes and I, I write linearly, but uh, I don't have any plot whatsoever planned. So you ever. don't structure, you don't plan it all out. It's not, yeah, it's not. just, it's so I'm guessing in a way then the characters and the situations you put them in dictate where the story goes next. Yeah. Yes. Wow, so you're actually, you're almost at the mercy of these characters. Yes. <laughs> so so then you go through the baby book. So it was Maxim the, the name you got from the book then, the colonel's yeah. name. Yeah. So you get this, you've got the, the word Maxim and you're thinking, right, what's he going to be like? Mm -hmm. Strong, powerful, de determined, warrior-like. Yes, definitely. And his, is he based on anybody you've, you've met? I have boyfriends who are very domineering. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. They were in the past. Definite, definite men in my life who were very strong willed men who like to take control. And I, I loved it actually very much. <laughs> you, 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 oh, so you, we're not saying you enjoyed being bullied, but you liked having a, a male character in your life that was a strong presence. Yes. And actually there's sort of, um, a side character who um, you might say takes over the role of protector. So he's not the bully. But are, you is are you talking Tiberius or are you talking, um, you're talking Cal? Oh no, I'm not talking either of those. <laughs> okay. Who, who are you talking about here? Sahir. Sahir. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see. So are you in a relationship now? I am. And your other half, what do they think of the book? Oh, he's so proud of me. He loves it. <laughs> Great. What's his name? Michael. So Michael. And is there any of Michael in Maxim? I wouldn't say that. He's he's a very strong man, my Michael. And he's very um, powerful, so to speak. Yeah. But he's not controlling. He lets me do what I feel is comfortable. And then he, um, 
you know, takes charge of the situation. <laughs> and, and that's that's what you like. That's what okay. I love that. <laughs> Do you think that relates back to your father being quite a dominant male character in the um, Probably. Yeah. I think we choose um, based on our our life you know, who we had as a father or men who they had as a mother. I think that happens a lot of times. Yeah, I, th I think it does too. So Maxim, I mean, he's the lead character and, you know, he's got a, a lot to deal with because he is in a position of power mm -hmm. and he does some, some pretty, what you might, you, you might describe them as horrible things, but is he, is he deep down, is he a good guy or is he a baddie? I couldn't, through the book, I couldn't work out whether he's a good guy or a baddie i will call him an anti-hero um okay I sort of, good description uh, yeah. yes i i based him very much on heathcliff from wuthering heights you did okay I did i did i loved that book i actually really loved heathcliff i thought he was like a fantastic person who had like obsession and, and he had that whole possessive love down and so I think with Maxim, um, he loved Ilanthe, but he had a sort of destructive love and he is a good guy in a way, but he's so tormented by his past that he doesn't really know how to show that love in a proper way. Yeah, but he's also got all the, the baggage that comes with being the main man and being in charge as well. Absolutely. And so he has to show he has to show people that he's in charge uh, a, a lot. And he does. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's a he's a fascinating character. And what about Alanthe? Um, she she comes across as a, as a little bit naive, but she's not stupid. No. Where, where does she come from? She lived on the streets for all her years. So she's not a, a, a unintelligent woman, obviously to live um, on a, a poor lifestyle, you have to know how to live and to survive. And she is a survivor. She has a lot of fortitude and endurance. And the fact that she is in a, uh, a very limited, uh, so to speak, um, I, I don't want to say gender because she's a, she's a woman who's called a pure. She has a fertility uh, uh, ability that she know other people do. Um, she Which makes is her incredibly to... sought after and people fight over. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And so she realizes she has a certain power through that. She does. At, at the same time, she's been protected by Maxim her entire life. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't really know how to cope and she's very naive in that sense yeah yeah what about tiberius then because he's in a, an odd situation because he's a powerful guy but he's not the main man no he's not but he is the second in command yeah he does have a lot of power yeah and he does find uh interesting um situations put upon him when he's forced to um take uh, control of the citadel which is the the nation of maxim maxim's nation so he is forced to to uh take captives yeah. and um he finds himself under um a little bit of duress as of that he also he also is almost like the fall guy for maxim oh yes <laughs> as well now if if you could be a character in your book which one do you think would suit your personality the best? I'm a mix of Ilanthe. Yeah. And oh gosh, I'm so many of them. Uh, <laughs> Ilanthe, because I'm told I'm very naive with trusting people. Uh, I'm definitely Maxim with my temper, my temper. And Zaheer, because I think he's a good person. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's it's a terrific read. It really is a terrific read. And who was the was she the queen, the, the one from the other? The, oh. And she was oh. so manipulative. What was her name? Oh. Um, that's Riva. 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 Yes. Yeah. yeah. She People was play different ways. So, <laughs> yeah, she where does she come from? What, what was the inspiration for her? I just thought about all the bullies in my life. 
Yeah. And uh, all the women who have been catty to me in the past. Right. And sort of uh, set it free. <laughs> so you exercised a few demons through her. So this is a very therapeutic process for you. It always is. <laughs> Right. So if you didn't have this, you'd be, I don't know what you'd be doing. You know, you'd be oh, yes. <laughs> mi middle of a siege with gun belts of ammunition and yeah. Oh, yes. uh, vigilante, <laughs> and you never know. <laughs> oh yeah. So this is a deep world that you, that you get into. And how long does it take you to put out one, to write one of these books from when you sit down and go like, here we go. Uh, well, uh, it depends on the length. Um, I'm usually writing uh, one every couple of months. Right. Wow. That's quite a, yeah. That, that's that's quite a, an output yeah. one every couple of months because i think it took me a month to record it you know and i wasn't having to come up with anything i was just the the words were there on the page and i just had to to go how did you find then the have you done audio books before uh the first book was put in audio i see and how did that go i loved it it's yeah great. yeah great and how well, how did you find the process of making this one well, my publisher, Blushing Books, handles everything for me. So yeah. I um, simply put it in their hands and they find someone fantastic to read for me and I trust them completely. So they were really nice, actually, and very, very positive. And uh, but it was a fun book to read because it was a it, it's a it's a world. Obviously, I'm not familiar with because it's a world that you made up. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, it's a genre of of uh, literature that I'm not familiar with i didn't even know they were called bully books so it was great to be immersed in it but goodness me there are some dark moments yeah. uh, particularly with the way women are treated yeah. um d d have you found that other women may have a, a problem with that because you know it's a very complicated issue that you know obviously there was the me too movement yes. and we've had you know men abusing power in positions of power abusing their power have, have you had any feedback along those lines that whether you're because i don't know whether you're helping or not <laughs> well i mean it's true i mean definitely the uh the feminism rise has come through and people ha either absolutely hate it or they love it and i think um as far as that's concerned um well i'm taking me personally it, it's therapy for me so for some people it made me read it and be like wow i experienced something like this I can relive it or I can work through it reading it. That's how I felt about it. Um, but other people may be like, oh no, this is just awful. I can't even stomach this. And I understand that. I totally, I totally get it. Um, but it's all personal taste, really. I mean, every book is. So have you been in situations like as dark as this where men have treated you this way? similar yeah <laughs> similar wow so to get through it rather than hide from it and the pain you've just put it all out there it's the best way for me to deal yeah well everybody's everybody's different and uh you're not worried that maybe in the wrong hands with a bloke who maybe is not quite right might just get a bit too into this I think and, and think that the behavior is acceptable in the real world. Well, I mean, there's always that risk with anything. Um, there's that risk when um, someone goes into a, a local restaurant and says, oh, you know, I don't like this food. Let's go off and go into a tangent because of it. There's there's a risk with everything, everything in the world. And people are either going to accept it or they're not going to accept it. So I just feel like this is my way of therapy mm -hmm. um it is take it or leave it take it yeah. or leave it yeah it's well it's the it's it's art and that's the thing with art is you know they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder and that really is true about art and i don't know what the true definition of art is but one i like to use is that art is something that moves you and if it moves you then it's art which means you know for me my my soccer team liverpool if you know, if Mo Salah does something amazing with the ball, to me, he's an artist because it moves me. And if something like this moves me in a totally different way, as long as I've been moved, affected emotionally or perhaps even spiritually, whatever that really means, then it is art. And this is uh, th this is this is art for sure. 
and challenging for some, but uh, actually uh, quite it's it's entertaining which which is that sounds like i'm demeaning it because it's 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 more it's deeper than that it's deeper than pure entertainment it is it, it is an art form and it's a it's a world to get into and uh and, and it's and it's definitely worth it and uh thank you so much for allowing me to to be part of it now as it's out there you know because for many years i did radio and radio is just it's gone one second and the it's over the next, but with audiobooks, they're there forever. You know, they're going to be there forever. So I'm a part of uh, Julia Payton's work now, which is an awesome responsibility to, to have. And I, I hope I've done things justice, but thank you for letting me yeah. be part of it. What's next for you then? I'm working on a series, uh, the Cruel Master series. I'm in the last book of that series. It's the same sort of dark, well, with, with a title like Cruel Masters, mm -hmm. there's a clue in the name. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And, uh, and wow. And so what are you, what are you, the, 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 your, your girlfriends that you hang out with, what has been their reaction to, to your work? Well, um, they are mixed. They are mixed really? about it. Um, some people are, uh, you know, they're really proud of me, you know, for doing what I have always wanted to do. They that's that's the win. That's the real win. If you can, yeah. you know, what's the old saying? If you you find a job you love, you never work another day yeah. in your life. You know, that's the real win. You're beating the system. <laughs> yeah. But most of all, you know, I'm proud because my daughter, you know, my daughter's in her 20s. And, you know, she, I think she's a brilliant writer in her own right. And I do this for her to also, because I mean, I feel like as an empowered woman, she has that ability to stand up and do whatever she feels like doing, whatever she wants to do in her life. And I did this, it was very hard for me to do, very hard for me to come forward and say, this is who I am. This is what I want to write. You can do it too, my child. <laughs> so she's... I hope she has what she wants. Wow. So she's she's read the books? She has. <laughs> okay. And she's okay with the, the content in there? Well, she's embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, at 20, she's probably starting to work out who the hell she is and, and what she's about. But was she reading them as a teenager? No. Okay. Because that would have been a... Uh, a much more difficult thing did you did you hide that you were because i i work with an author who writes some books that aren't as dark as yours but they have some racy content in and she writes under a pseudonym and she's got a lot of children and they don't know it's her right. um would you ever consider that well my daughter's 23 yeah. so okay. these books didn't come out until june so she's been old enough to read them ever. fine okay so yeah. you've never you've not had that awkward moment no. So that was quite a punt then when you decided that you were going to, you know, you were going to write what you wanted to write. Did mm -hmm. you ever, did you feel under pressure that you should write the, uh, the, the Harlequin style romance or, or whatever it is that, that women authors are supposed to write? Did you, did you feel any of that pressure at all? Um, I think it's probably not me. It's yeah. not who I want to be. Um, I think I just have to write what's true to myself. Yeah, I, I'm I'm totally against censorship, so I don't think that whatever I would write should be banned in any way. No, so, well, it's um, up to people whether they read it. A censorship on exactly. books is is ridiculous because, you know, reading a book is such an active thing. It doesn't come at you. You have to go and find it and read it off the page. If you don't like it, you don't have to read it. Censorship exactly. of books is a really silly thing unless it's inciting a, a hatred of a, you know, if if it really can be proved that it is in, inciting a hatred or violence or something well then I, I get that you know that needs needs to be looked at but yeah right. censorship so i see right yeah we don't turn all ray bradbury on us <laughs> yeah um, yeah wow well it, it is a terrific read it's a challenging read and it, it was so fun I mean, it sounds weird to say the word fun but it was for me to be you know because i got to be maxim you know and and playing powerful people like that you know these larger than life characters there's just 
there's just something fabulous about that. So although I was reading it, I was having to perform it as well in a way. And that was just so much fun. So I'm so pleased that you that you let me do it. And let's hope that the book does does really, really well. Actually, if you're watching this and you would like a free copy of this, if you go to the notes down below there, there's a link there. And if you click on that link, if you're one of the first 20 people to click that link, I will send you a code so you can download the audiobook for free and you can check it out. But you've got to be one of the first 20. So that's there is a link down there. Don't mess about with that. Get in there and click that and uh, click that link. And uh, actually, no, let's do it. Let's do it in an even simpler way. I'll put my email address down there. Look at that. And if you click the email address and you email me your details and tell me whether you're in the US or the UK, because the codes are different for audible.co.uk or audible.com. If you click it, click there and click the, uh, there's a link there that will take you to get a free thing if you sign up with Audible for 30 days. But also in there, there's my email address. Email me and say, please send me a, a free code. And, uh, and if you do that, then I will send you a code to download that for free. And, uh, and you can check this out and you can enjoy this world. And then I'm sure once you've got that one, you'll download the rest in the series. This is book two. You'll go back and you'll get book one and you'll, you'll check them all out because this is a, this is a, a fantastic thing. It really is. And uh, it's dark and it makes you think and it makes you wonder and you don't know who's a goodie and who's a baddie and you don't know what's going to happen next because when Julia was writing this, you didn't know what was going to happen next. No. <laughs> Brilliant. Fabulous. Thanks for talking to me, Julia. Thank you. Julia Payton. The book is called Pride. And it's Colonel's, the Colonel, well, Colonel's Conquest Book Two. That's what it's called. Check it out now and don't forget to get the free one by doing the link and sending me an email.